Welcome to another episode of Weedy TV. In this episode, here's a quick breakdown of bits and pieces I use when I'm going shore diving. You'll see key bits of equipment like this case here for me to put my key in, so I don't have to hide my key when I park my car somewhere. I've got my drop weight system with my reef bungee, so that means that I'm able to anchor my float boat and use it as a point of reference. Always take your dive flag with you and have it secured on your witty float boat so boaties around you know that you're a diver in the water. I'll take a shorter spare spear gun that I bungee to the side of my float boat here. That means that if the visibility is poor or I need a backup spear gun, I've got one at hand. I clip it on with one of the secure points on my weedy chill bag. And being winter, I've got new 5mm gloves and booties. It makes a world of difference having new gloves and booties to keep you nice and warm. I've done a morning at work and I'm all packed, ready to go now. I've trudged my way out to my shore diving spot, getting all prepped. It's raining, it's quite windy, but it's all offshore, so the water is absolutely flat calm. Before putting your fins on, wade out into the water so you don't damage your fins, especially over a rocky bottom. I'm using a 110 carbon fiber reel gun which should be pretty good with the conditions as long as I have a little bit of visibility. On the way out, I spot, I think it's a sea slug cruising around, being quite active. Once out on the edge, I notice the visibility is not too bad, maybe like four or five meters. I notice some bait fish and I'm doing a quick dive, but I've planned my shore dive out. I've got in the water at about 1.30 p.m. and they're starting to get the incoming tide. Even though it's just about dead low tide now, that's not a problem as I'm gonna cover a bit of ground before that tide picks up and I start seeing more and more fish, hopefully. In winter time, you get these big schools of jack mackerel that can come up in the shallows and of course, there's always a chance of a John Dory chasing them, or a winter kingfish. Heading back into the shallows, soon spot a school of small kawai, which are gonna make perfect sashimi or raw fish. As I mentioned, it's dead low tide, so I'll take any fish I can get at this point. Being that the sun's going to start going down at about 5pm, I do have a limited amount of time. That school's still hanging around, so quickly load my gun as fast as I can and see if I can double up. To approach Kawai, often it's best to get down at their level and try and line the bottom. They're more likely to come into range and it makes for an easier shot. Although these kawai are only small, I actually really, really enjoy them for raw fish or for poke bowls. The kawai start getting bigger and bigger, and now a school of bigger ones come in. They're not too big, these ones, and they'll still make pretty good raw fish, especially considering we're gonna eat them fresh either tonight or the next night. A bit of a high shot on this one, but trying to get a shot in quickly as they're blasting around. And 
and I found out what they're eating. I gutted this car line, you can see there's a whole heap of piper coming out of it. And of course, when there's school fish in the area, sometimes it's good getting to the bottom and waiting because you will get other species that will hang with them. Now it's time to start looking for some snapper. The tide has started to move. There started to be a little bit of action. I missed a nice snapper, which I was a bit annoyed by. So I broke open a handful of kin in the same spot just to see if I could get another one to come in. Take your time when looking on your ground baits because sometimes the snapper appear when you didn't see them before. Especially smaller snapper like this one which tend to camouflage well against the bottom. into my chill bag and my witty float boat. That's gonna help keep my kawai and my snapper in better condition for eating. I'd been circled multiple times by that school of kawai again, and it was getting later and later in the day, and I knew I was running out of time, so I'm just gonna take one more of them. That same idea of getting down to their level and see how they tend to be a little bit more friendly and easy to shoot at. This doesn't just apply to kawai, it works with so many other species as well. I keep working through the shallows, these good kelpy areas, snooping over rocks trying to use the sun as much as I can. It looks great for snapping. I am seeing the odd one, but they are moving around quite a bit and hard to close the gap. It could have something to do with the full moon that's coming tonight. That means the fish are gonna be a lot more active towards nighttime and during the night feeding. I am running out of time at this point as I've got a bit of a swim to get back to my car. But fortunately, I did put some insurance policies down on the way. Every so often, if I found a nice looking spot or saw a snapper, I'd break open a few kinna to check on my swim back. Because of course, on a shore dive, you swim along a bit of coast, and then on the way back, often you won't see anything. So sometimes it can be worth breaking open a few kinna, and it leaves options for you on the way back. And the closer we got to the evening, more and more snapper turned up. Like this nice one here. When I fired the shot, I could hear the spear hit the rock behind the fish and I couldn't see the spear coming out the other side. This can be a common problem when shooting fish when you're close to the rock. Even though you're well within range, the spear can hit a rock behind and not engage the flopper. Not wanting to take, take the risk as I've got a limited amount of fish to go down and tackle the snapper into the bottom.
these are such awkward situations because you want to be careful not to take pressure off the spear in case you dislodge the flopper and of course you don't want to put too much pressure in case you pull out the spear and in this case which you can't see as the spear's actually fallen out when I grabbed it fortunately I had a good grip on its gills it's great because this has taken the heat off the day a little bit and now I have a decent amount of fish into the float boat to join all the other fish. I've got one more ground bait to check before heading back to my car. It's good practice because you've got to remember where you leave the ground bait. So Use land reference or even references on the bottom so you're able to find your ground baits again. I make my approach from a long way back from the edge to make sure that I don't alarm any fish that might be there. Ready at all times to shoot a fish if need be. And there's another nice snapper on this one. This is a better situation where I've got a sandy background, so even if the fish is close to the bottom, the spear in theory should go through the fish and into the sand and it won't affect the flopper. Persistence paid off and I managed to get a couple of nice fish right at the end of the day. It's time to consolidate all the fish into the float boat and I need to quickly swim back to the car before it's pitch black. But I'll keep my gun loaded you never know what you might see on the way back, especially if you're coming into the evening. A lot of things I can learn from this day as well. Throughout the day when the tide started picking up with the incoming tide, and also the sun getting lower in the sky with a full moon, I started to see more fish. So it always pays to take notice of the conditions when you're going out, when you have a successful dive, and when you have a not so successful dive. So you know how to replicate those in the future. Even though the day started slow, I ended up with a good healthy catch. I've got plenty of snapper and some car wide for some raw fish for the next couple of days. Buoyed by my enjoyable dive, I hit up my mates and said we'd better head back out on the coast in the next couple of days before the weather turns. Sam offered to take his boat as the weather was a little bit more rough and we I only had a really, really short window before the wind got up. While driving the boat, we stumbled over a bit of reef that looked quite good on the sounder. In about 20, 22 metres of water, we hadn't dived out here, so it was worth a look. Once on the bottom, the conditions were quite gloomy. It was quite dirty and I think it had a lot to do with all the rain and the runoff. But man, there was so much fish life and the bottom looked fantastic. Certainly a spot to check more often. Mm. 
target species for this dive were John Dory and a kingfish. And certainly our hopes were reasonably high once we got in the water with all this bait fish. With the water being quite dirty, it was great having three of us because we could cycle our dives. One down, two on the surface, and it means we didn't drift off a spot and we could navigate ourselves along this edge. The signs were good, but we hadn't seen the target fish just as yet. A nice kingfish makes a quick pass. And in this dirty water, fortunately with my gun, even at this sort of end of visibility, you're still within range to shoot it. I wasn't really sure of my shot, as you'll see it was quite a rush shot as it was disappearing into the murk. But again, that's a great thing to dive with Buddy. Sam headed straight back down and knew what to do to try and put another spear into it and make sure that we secured the fish. He managed to do so, but as it turned out, the first shot wasn't too bad in the end. We were all pretty stoked because this worked out perfectly. We were able to take a section of this kingfish each, which will be plenty of fish for us for the week. Fresh kingfish in wintertime is absolutely awesome. The tide had turned, and with it, it looked even better on the bottom. So we worked our way back towards the boat, hoping that we might be able to pick up some of the cows. There just had to be a John Dory here somewhere. and it took me almost landing on top of one to find one. They can be the masters of camouflage at times. Amazing what the change of tide did. Sam got a John Dory the very next dive. Again, as I talked about in the previous shore dive, we took into consideration which way the current was going. So we know for this spot next time we want the current to run a certain way, as that's when we started getting fish. One more bit of treasure to pick up before I go. Found this, I guess it's a kayak anchor. They must have got hooked and they let all their rope out and let it go.
about 30 meters of rope with a little anchor I'll find useful. And with that, time was virtually up for the day. We were certainly excited to go back to that spot on a better day. But there's always someone on the boat that doesn't want to stop, and Dan wanted to have one last look on a bit of coast before heading in. Not bad, bro.